welcome to all our viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and MC here at Gold. And with me here today is one of our speakers from our upcoming Gold Lactation Online Conference of 2022, Indira Lopez Passals. Welcome, Indira. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is absolutely lovely to have you here. You're coming to us with a very important topic you will be presenting. And um, I will we will talk about that in just a moment here. First of all, I want you to introduce yourself to our viewers. Where in the world are you located, first of all? I am located in Wimbledon. That's in the southwest part of London in the UK. Beautiful, beautiful. So you are a lactation professional and you work with quite complex cases. So let's dive into your um, career and your professional journey. Uh, guide us through a little bit about uh, your journey and uh, what you're working on right now. Wonderful. I have been uh, working as an IBCLC for the past 11 years. I've just been re-accredited for the second time. And in the last four consecutive years, I have been leading the specialist breastfeeding clinic as part of the Merton Health Visiting Team. That's an NHS clinic. And um, I see babies that have quite complicated cases, or they have already been seen by several professionals, uh, GPs, midwives, health visitors, and then they are triaged into our clinic. Beautiful. And these uh, babies and families, they come from all over, you know, uh, England or the UK, or is it more in your area? What do you see? Well, sadly, it is in my area. Um, this model of the specialist breastfeeding clinic is actually unique in the UK. There are very several of, of mm -hmm. these led by uh, only an IBCLC without a dual credential. So it's a quite an experiment, quite mm -hmm. a new experiment. Um, and so sadly, we can only see referrals from babies that live in, in, my, in my area. Okay. It's good to know. And it's such a, such a wonderful center that uh, is so needed, right, for these uh, complex cases, especially babies with uh, cleft lift, lip or palate. They, they need special attention, right? So tell me a little bit about what you see, how you work. You work in a team. How, how is this uh, when somebody new comes in? How, how, does it, uh, how is the care going then? How is it established? Absolutely. I think the first thing I would like to, um, to say, Kristen, is that when you break your knee, mm -hmm. um, you usually go and see a specialist. Yeah. When a mother has a breastfeeding problem, sadly, they don't get to see a specialist. And this is why our credential is so important and we mm -hmm. need to raise awareness all over the world. Yeah. So that's the purpose of the clinic. The clinic is to give specialist breastfeeding to support for those babies that are struggling. And they have already been in touch with um, breastfeeding counselors, lay professionals, and, and as I said, all the other professionals. So they've seen quite a lot of people. They've received quite a lot of conflicting advice. And they mm -hmm. come to see us. For many people, this is their last shot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're the last person I'm willing to see, no pressure. So <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's lovely because we have created a wonderful, it's, um, even though the clinic is only staffed by IBCLC, we work very closely in our communities uh, with the GPs, with the midwives. It's, it's really become uh, multidisciplinary, our work, and, and we depend on, on, on each other to for the mm -hmm. referrals and, and back to working, you know, to get prescriptions, we have to involve the GPs and, and other healthcare professionals. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's teamwork is so, so important for especially with these complex cases, right? I mean, that's, um, that's key there. And it's wonderful work you're doing, because I can only imagine these families and you you're mentioning they're coming to you this is their last uh, last shot so to speak they are saying you know this is this is it it needs to work now or and and the pressure is there as you mentioned so they're already coming to you in distress and you know emotionally and physically you know um tired exhausted and and uh, so worried about their little ones of course right so mm -hmm. um it is it is quite a quite a you know um 
uh, beautiful work you're doing, but also I can imagine very, um, sometimes it takes, it takes a lot, right? It takes mm. a lot, mm. <laughs> lot to do this. Um, wonderful. Uh, you are also doing a lot of research. And uh, you are the director of the Center for Breastfeeding Education and Research. You are working on your PhD right now. So congratulations. You are. Uh, this is wonderful. So tell us a little bit about that part as well. So I think there's a big um, gap in the literature. And as an educator, I'm also an educator and, and have been educating future IBCLCs here in the UK for the past 11 years. And of course, in education uh, and research, they're combined. So as an educator, I started realizing how there's so much um, information that needs to be published. And, and, and I started by uh, publishing a few um, clinical cases. And now we're, uh, we've just got published our first um, article that sums up all the data from the specialist breastfeeding clinic. Um, and that has just been, uh, it has just appeared. Um, we're working on another paper about breastfeeding support during COVID times. We were one of the few clinics, in-person clinics to remain open in the whole UK and had to fight for this. Uh, but now we have the data and we you know, are prepared to carry on giving support. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that you were able to stay open to give that in-person support to these families. Um, it's such challenging time and I'm so glad to hear that you have data and, and the research can move forward and there is information now because that's what we need to put something in practice. We need evidence-based, uh, you know, uh, and we re need research. So that's the first step before we can really confidently uh, practice, right? We need, we need that. We need the data. We need the research. So it's wonderful the work you're doing. Wow. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you. Let's, let's talk also now about the presentation here. It goes right with the topic here. Assisted nursing supporting breastfeeding infants with craniofacial anomalies. Talk a little bit about what we uh, might learn here from you. So I think the first thing to say is that this uh, presentation is, is inspired on a clinical case which I published um, just last year in the Journal of Human Lactation. And I had the privilege and the honor to support this family. Um, their fourth baby was um, born with a full unilateral cleft lift and, and palate. Um, and she was determined to breastfeed that baby as she had breastfed all her other babies. And uh, it was a wonderful story where there was a lot of trial and error. And we devised this technique. I came up with this idea in her house of um, using a nipple shield to help cover the, the cleft palate with uh, an NG2 attached to a syringe. So I then asked her how would she call this and, and she, she coined this beautiful term which is assisted nursing it, com it mm -hmm. comes from her um, and, and that's what I will be presenting and um, it, the, the presentation also has a little bit of anatomical explanations of what we're dealing with and techniques on how to support either babies with cleft lift palate or, or both so Beautiful. That's what's coming ahead. Beautiful. And it's important because you have, you, you're mentioning how rare these specialty clinics are that you, uh, you know, you are part of. So uh, many of our lactation professionals out in the field might see cases, maybe not as often as you because you're specialized. But if we find these cases, we, we want to help these families. We want to help these babies, right? So tools to equip us to do so is uh, so important. And thank you so much for for sharing this knowledge with us at Gold here. My pleasure. And for our viewers, if you are excited about this presentation just as much as I am and you want to come and view the presentation and be part of our lactation online conference of 2022, you can still sign up. We get started on April 4th. It's just around the corner. Not very long from now. This presentation, particular presentation will be live on April 25th, but all the presentations are always recorded. So if you cannot be there in person, the presentation will be recorded and you can watch it at your leisure. Thank you again, Indira Lopez Basalt, for sitting down here with me and talking to me. And thank you for sharing this information here with us at Gold. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all our viewers out there. And I hope to see you at the conference.
Bye-bye for now.